So last night, I did something I don't normally do, which I'm glad I did. It was great. I sat down and I devoted two hours of my time to a movie. And I watched this movie. It's called Bad Blood. And I I heard, um, it was just, uh, someone sent me a clip of Andrew Schultz, the comedian, podcaster, Netflix special guy. And they sent me a clip. And I, I only saw maybe like eight seconds of it. I don't, I don't know why I saw so little, but it was, he said, uh, Hey, he was talking to his, his boys on the couch and he said, Hey, have you seen the Taylor Swift documentary, bad blood? Um, I can't believe this documentary is not bigger. It, it deserves a look. And I was like, Hmm. And for some reason it stuck. And obviously, uh, Taylor Swift didn't pop up on my radar until um, she started dating the guy who was uh, selling two shots for the price of one, uh, which which they were both free. Uh, she dates this guy, Travis Kelsey, who plays football in the NFL. And he had these Pfizer commercials where he was encouraging people to um, get their flu shot and their COVID shot simultaneously. And we all know that not only is that shot free, but you can get paid to take it. Like you can go to certain pharmacies or Target or wherever, and they'll pay you $25 up to $200 to take the shot. And I was kind of, I was like, man, why is this guy who has such influence over uh, young men? I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's who watches football. Um, and those are the ones who are having the most adverse conditions from shots. Why is he pushing it anyway? And then, you know, I don't know if it was at that time or a week later or a month later, but then all of a sudden I saw he's dating this girl named Taylor Swift. And I'd obviously heard her name, but I didn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know much about her. I didn't even know. I, I probably heard her songs a thousand times, but to, still to this day, I can't name one of her songs. Um, and, and, and maybe it's just because uh, everything media is so fragmented these days. You know, uh, in this documentary, they claim that Taylor Swift Swift is the uh, biggest music star who ever lived, which I, I I find hard to believe because when I was a kid, if there were like three TV stations and like everyone knew who uh, Walter Cronkite was, like everyone, I have to guess he was bigger than Taylor Swift because there weren't all these choices for media. Um, or, uh, I don't know when, um, David Hasselhoff did Knight Rider. I have to guess more people knew who he was or Mr. T when the A-Team, there were only, you know, when the A-Team was around, I still think there was only like 13 channels. Anyway, uh, I, I watched this documentary last night and I was, I was shocked, but I shouldn't have, I, I shouldn't have been but it really illustrates uh, where we're at in um, influence and comprehension of uh, what's going on uh, with, with people on the planet and how they're influenced. The documentary is broke into two parts. By the way, the name of the documentary, if you want to see it, is uh, Bad Blood. And you can sign up for a free Cinemax um, subscription and, uh, and, and you can see it. Or you can pay the seven ninety nine a month. Uh, so, oh, Jeffrey Birchfield, we had four channels. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I think I had four, too. I, uh, we didn't have PBS. We had NBC, ABC, CBS, and then we had a local channel, too, in San Francisco, KTVU. And then I guess eventually we got PBS. Did we have PBS? Anyway. Um... And yeah, uh, documentaries are never biased. I know. So I'm not sure. You, that's a great point. I'm not sure if this is even true. But the first hour, they, they present the documentary as the first hour is from Taylor Swift's perspective. And then the second hour is from Scooter Braun's perspective. And Scooter Braun was her, uh, started off as her agent. And then eventually, as the documentary goes on, he evolves into the guy who purchases the record label that hold held the rights or holds the rights to the, her first six albums that she recorded. So as a young girl, she signed a record deal with a, um, a record label. I think it's called the big machine or big machine. And so they, they owned her first six albums. So she was like 16 years old and, and, 
and, and they purchased that. And then somewhere, somewhere along the line, uh, this guy, Scooter Braun, became her agent. And so there's a distinction between those two entities. And then eventually he bought – He, I guess he became so successful that he bought the record label. And then he owned the rights to her albums. Danny Boswick, Sevon consumes no mainstream media and is doing a podcast about it. Swift, that's how big she is. She's the biggest star maybe ever. Hard to quantify, but it's close. God, I, I, I don't think so. But maybe. I mean, shit. Maybe. So the first hour of the documentary is supposed to lay out her case of why she was wronged by this man, Scooter Braun. And you watch it for an entire hour. And I rewound it probably like 10 times. And the only thing that he's accused of that's wrong is that he's a man. It's never, um, it's never, and, and that women are mistreated in the music industry, which I find fascinating because um, right now it, uh, the big story in the music industry is that young men uh, were getting ass fucked uh, in the basement at P. Diddy's place if they wanted to uh, make it big in movies. That's the big story, right? And yet this documentary, they never say anything he does wrong to her. It's never like he touched me inappropriately. He was too friendly to me. He belittled me because I was a woman. One time he talked down to me and called me a little girl in front of other executives. Nothing like that. There's nothing like that in the entire first hour. They call, him, they call the industry a misogynistic, but don't give a single example other than the fact that uh, they claim it's a male-dominated industry at the executive level. So, like, you would call, let's say, the garbage truck industry misogynistic. Why? Because all garbage truck drivers, 90% of garbage truck drivers are men. That's, that's the entire premise. That is the entire premise of this first hour. Not one example, just over and over in this doc. It's called, um, what's it called? Blood? Let me, let me, I'll get you the name again. Hold on. Uh, Bad Blood on Cinemax. Taylor Swift versus Scooter Braun. Uh, in, in this documentary, they claim that uh, Taylor Swift uh, experienced misogyny, but they never tell you once what she experienced other than the fact that she was around men. It's an hour of that. I kept waiting for one example. Nothing. Not one. And they, um, there's three in, in the first hour. She has, there's, um, it, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a documentary composed of talking heads. And so they'll interview one of her fans, then they'll interview her personal assistant, and then they'll interview, um, someone who set up the speakers on her tour. Then they'll interview and they go through and they interview all these people. And the only things that said over and over and over is that she was in a misogynistic industry and that she's very real. They, they just kept saying, oh, my God, she's so real. She's just a normal person. She's so real. No examples of her being real. Matter of fact, at one point, they're like, hey, man, she's really, really guarded. And it takes a long time to get to know her. And yet in this first hour, they also tell you, oh, she's so real. Um, they, there's a, there's a compelling scene, um, where, which is pretty fucking crazy and fucked up. She's receiving some sort of award. Um, I think it's called an AMA or a VMA. It's, it's something a, I want to say, I want to say it was a VMA video music award and she's on stage. This is in 2009 and she accepts the award and she's only 19 years old. She's just a young lady. 
And by the way, if you like her, it, there are some incredible shots of her. Um, the, 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 the video footage is absolutely outstanding. She looks absolutely amazing. And she's on stage and she gets this award and um, she appears to be uh, uh, overwhelmed and exceedingly excited and proud. And the rapper Kanye West uh, jumps on the stage. The same way Will Smith jumped on the stage when Chris Rock was when he slapped Chris Rock and he jumps on the stage and he walks over to her and he interrupts her thank uh, thank you speech her you know her speech she's about to give or halfway through her speech she's about to give after receiving the award and he says Taylor I'm going to let you finish but the album that Beyonce put out and the video that but Beyonce put out was the absolutely the most amazing video ever put out this year he says something like that I'm paraphrasing which is absolutely one of the stupidest songs ever. Um, I don't know. I don't know what song Taylor Swift won it for, but it's a song Beyonce wrote um, uh, called "Single Ladies." It's probably one of the grossest songs I've ever fucking heard. If you have a daughter, do not let them listen to that bullshit. You will, you will not have a healthy uh, relationship with a man if you uh, follow the premise of this. Uh, this song, Single Ladies. I remember that song very well. I remember when I would hear it, I'd be like, Jesus. No wonder there's so many divorces. Um, so, uh, let me see. Uh, Matt Burns, uh, could you imagine a white man doing that to a black woman? No, I could not. I could not. The fallout would be crazy. Anyway, so when he did that to her, it's a really compelling scene in the documentary, and you feel you feel really bad for her. By the way, last night I did an unboxing of the Exerciser CrossFit 20 for 20% off. Have it on my shelf. There, there she is. They gave me the 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 model. It comes in three models, three, five, and seven. They sent me the seven inch or someone must have told them. Uh, and then a few years later, um, Kanye made a song where he said in the song, and I'm paraphrasing, I, f I feel like I might still have sex with Taylor Swift. I made that bitch famous. He used that um, line in a song. And she got really fucking pissed. Like really pissed. And there's another component to this too. In 2016, her agent, Scooter Braun, also started representing Kanye. And so her and Kanye had this incident. And then her agent, who it appears like she was very, very close with, this Scooter Braun character... He's a young man. He looks like a, he looks like a kid. I think now this this happened. He's probably like thirty at the time. I'm guessing. And um, so she 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 starts tweeting, I guess, or or texting or whatever they do, and started talking about how offensive that line was that that Kanye said that. I feel like I might still have sex with Taylor Swift. I made that bitch famous, and she got really pissed. The weird part about that is there's video out there of Kanye acting like a scared little boy calling her on the phone and she's on speakerphone and he asks her hey can i use this line now when he says the line to her he leaves out the word bitch he says something more like i feel like i might still have sex with taylor swift i made her famous he leaves out i made that bitch famous And, and he was also accused of that as being misogynistic. So there's this constant theme that women are treated differently in the music industry and that they have no power. Meanwhile, everywhere in the news is, is that P. Diddy's fucking ass-pounding men having anal sex with men in order for them to get their record deals. 